Hey VC, it's Mazzy, and uh, this is a somewhat of a video response to Mr. Hall of Fame, who recently did his 2019 room tour. And as the UK folks say, I was gobsmacked. <laughs> what a friggin' great setup he has. It's not just a setup, but his intense organization. Now, I thought I was anal in that respect, and Mr. Virgo here organizing and uh, putting things together, but the way he, you gotta look at that if you haven't seen it. If, Mr. Hall of Fame, if you're not a subscriber, I mean, you probably are, because he has like, I think, 6.7 million subscribers or something like that, and he's a great guy, great selection, a wide variety of uh, genres that he's into. I love it. Um, but everything is by genre, and uh, it looks like a friggin' record store. Anyway, my setup is my house, upstairs and down, so I'll give you a little, uh, my 2019 tour. This is a view from my sweet spot, which is an Ikea chair, which is actually surprisingly comfortable. Now, don't worry, these uh, hides, cow hides are faux, so no animals were hurt. Uh, in the making of this room and home music tour. I got an easy listening playlist coming from, um, I don't stream, but I do have a hard drive downstairs that has 150,000 songs from my CDs and other sources that when I have friends over a party, we're not record, we're not record playing. Um, I just play this stuff and this is random. So let's start out with the heart here. This is my uh, Rotel uh, surround sound receiver. R RX, what is it, I don't know, numbers. RS, RSX 1065, excuse me. I got this in 2002, 2003. I used to have a big surround system in San Francisco. It's a little different here because it's off center, so that was mainly for movies, not, no, not so much about uh, music. I don't really play a lot of 5.1 surround. And the way my room is right now, it's not perfectly configured for that, but this is a powerhouse and it's been great. I probably at some point should get a separate stereo receiver and then do a, uh, what they call a home theater pass through. That's a little too technical here. But uh, my speakers are my newest acquisition. I got about two years ago. They're Bowers and Wilkins 702 S2s. There's a center and there's obviously the right and left. And the way this room is, it's off center and it's just a, it's a living kitchen room. So what's great is that my Panasonic plasma, which I've had for about five years, I still love the plasma. I know they don't make them anymore, but it's got great, great, um, it's great for cinema, but it has, it pivots. So when we're sitting watching movies, we get that angle there. So there you go. My turntable is a Riga RP8. I got this as a um, demo from a company or from a store as the uh, P8s were coming out. So I got a pretty good deal on it. I love Riga tables. In here is an Aria phono stage and the power source for the Riga table. I got a power conditioner, Rotel power conditioner, and an Oppo 205, which is a transport DAC for Blu-rays, DVDs, etc. They stopped making these, and this is a wonderful uh, playback. I don't play a lot of CDs up here, but I do watch movies with friends. Downstairs in my office is where I play that, but I think this music needs to be turned down, don't you think? Hey, hey, okay, baby. Um, I'm now playing, now spinning. Um, it made by a, um, from San Francisco. And these are made by Copal Design. Women's business in San Francisco. She's great, her stuff's a little pricey, but I think it's all handmade worth it. So don't expect cheap stuff, but if you want great dividers, Copal Design, check them out, they're wonderful. And then over here is my uh, my pet, Nipper. 
You know Nipper from uh, RCA, his master's voice, and uh, EMI. And right over here are some of my bachelor pad lounge records, cocktail records, cocktail music, and uh, great kind of covers. You've seen this before in some of my earlier videos, a great cover. So it's people like Martin Denny and Ema Sumac. Great, she has like, what, five, six octaves of a voice. Great stuff, some amazing living stereo records like Peter Gunn, Henry Mancini, Les Baxter, great covers again, and Martin Denny, you know, the one everyone sees, but I go for all of them. Enchanted Sea, a lot of exotica type things. Cocktails. Music, martinis, and memories. That's kind of my weekend description. Now, Jackie Gleason, you all know him from the Honeymooners and the Jackie Gleason show. He was a great orchestra and band leader, and I love this. This is an album that um, the cover was done by the great surrealistic artist, surreal artist, Salvador Dali. And of course, Enoch Light, all the per the uh, persuasive percussions, provocative percussions, the um, spaced out Enoch Light, ping pong effects when stereo was really getting promoted for the first time. But great stuff, I love these covers. I like cover art, especially mid-century. You can see those all the time, fairly cheap, but it's worth it. So, um, these are my Avedon posters that you'd send away for from Look Magazine in 1967. And these are the ones I sent. I think they were like $15 for all four posters, plus the black and white group poster, which I no longer have. So this means I've had these for 52 years. I've framed them probably two or three times over those 50 years. So if you get closer, it'll warm, but um, these are amongst my favorite by the great photographer Richard Avedon, as is this picture of John Lennon from the, basically the same series without the solarization. This is where my rear speakers are and my new releases. So again, a little off axis. This is my, um, you know, fuck this LA Dodgers album, the Chavez Ravine, Ry Cooter album, which in music tells a story of uh, moving out people to build Dodger Stadium in the 50s. New releases, Dream Syndicate, Gruff, Mavis Staples, Melvin's New Issues, the usual stuff. The great series by Analog Africa. Some great records there. I love these. Grateful Dead CD box. The Pacific Northwest with Native American art. Love that. I showed that in my box set video. And again, more records here. I just did a clip of that Chrissy Hind. This is probably my favorite album of the year so far. But more recent pickups, releases, mostly new things in this pile, new for me. Plus all this year's Tone Poets, which um, you've seen those videos I'm a big fan of. Yep, 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 yep. And uh, below here I keep a lot of my box sets, so I loosen up room downstairs. And we'll go downstairs in a moment, but first, a haul of some of my photography that I've collected, music, rock photography. First, uh, you might have seen this, Benefit of Mr. Kite, circus poster. This gave uh, John Lennon the idea for that song. He basically lifted right off, you know, the poster. This is a repro, obviously. It's not the one that came in the deluxe box, but Pablo Fanca's Fair, Henry the Horse, Splendid Time will begin, be guaranteed for all. Trampoline leaps, the celebrated Mr. K, benefit of Mr. Kite. Pretty cool, huh? See, you get inspiration from everything. This is a Barry Feinstein photograph signed by Barry and, um, what is it, number 12 out of 20. He passed away some years back. This was the cover of uh, All Things Was Past, George Harrison. This is kind of one of my favorites. This was given to me by the photographer. Um, this is Grace Slick. This is a Herb Green's photograph. 
he took uh, at the same time he took the cover for a surrealistic pillow by the Jefferson Airplane. I love this. This was his apartment in North Beach in San Francisco. So I love that. He came to my office one day on a head in San Francisco and we were talking photography and he went out to his car and hey, if you want to print? And he gave it to me, which is kind of cool. Probably about 20 years ago. And another, this is probably my favorite photograph I own. Bought from the photographer Ethan Russell, 1999. This is John Lennon listening to the playback of the White Album in 1968. And Ethan Russell took um, a lot of photographs around this period. He took uh, the rooftop, Abbey, uh, excuse me, yeah, uh, Let It Be, I mean, pictures and the Abbey Road book, the cover of the, out, the, cover of the um, excuse me, Let It Be covers. He took uh, the promo, last promo shot series of the Beatles that was used on the Hey Jude Beatles Again album and uh, who's next amongst other things too. So we're gonna head downstairs now to the record room which you've seen in my whack-a-mole videos and other videos. There's always hats around this house somewhere. George Harrison, this is a poster given away when the George Harrison vinyl box set came out some year, what, three years, four years ago, sort of? Shepard Ferry. He basically appropriates <laughs> existing images and does his treatment to it like this. It's really great stuff. So they gave us away and I framed it a few years ago. Uh, he got very famous in 2008 because he did the uh, Obama Hope poster. So you know that style. Did Johnny Cash in the last couple years. Um, some really cool stuff. I just think it's kind of a great iconic poster. And it was used on the reissue of the I Me Mind book by George Harrison. Now, of course the record library off the hallway. And um, unlike Mr. Hall of Fame, I have this, that wall there is almost everything. It's all rock, jazz, soul, blues, bluegrass, country, pretty much everything else except jazz, except my Beatles and except soundtracks and collections. So I don't like to separate for me. And what Mr. Hall of Fame said, it's just what works for you, you know, where you like things. I just can't, there's so many crossover artists that might have a little country, a little bluegrass, a little rock, a little soul, a little funk. And uh, A to Z, A to Z is what I like to do. And um, in that case, I find it, I know where it is. And um, that's pretty much all there is there. I mean... I'm not going to pull any. You've seen it in my whack-a-moles, and I'll continue to do that because what's great about the VC and what I've loved here is showing my collection and, and having me rediscover parts of my collection. Cream at Royal Albert Hall actually was at the second show of that uh, Cream reunion in 2005, so it's kind of important to me. Uh, these are two different uh, gold and platinum records I got when I worked on the record industry in the 70s. Uh, this capital gave these away and this uh, is a gold record celebrating the Beatles rock roll music. It's probably one of the worst ones to get because that ugly, ugly cover, that 50s concept cover that they um, created which has nothing to do with the Beatles so it's too bad. This is for our display marketing merchandising contest that um, we won in support of Boz Skag. This is Silk Degrees in 1977, so this one was made out to me. I might have it changed to Mazzy, but I don't think I need to after all these years, after 40-something years, 42 years, but it's kind of cool to have. Moving along, uh, this is the Beatle section. Pretty crazy stuff. Um, so, it starts with the American albums, mono and stereo, uh, early pressings, interview records, things like that, in, in uh, chronological order. Then it goes into all the collections. We get here and we have my original UKs. I think here they're mostly stereo at the end there. Those Beatle uh, icons are things we got from Capitol Records in the 70s for the, for the record store. Um, I'm not going to pull records out for this video. More UK's reissues. There's also some German pressings and uh, 
Dutch pressings, Italian pressings, Uruguay pressings, Russian Federation, and then bizarre uh, collections and Japanese collections, golden grates. Some sound good, some not so much. Uh, behind Pepper, there's uh, more, I'm not gonna pull this out right now, I can't get it, but more UK pressings. And then here we go into the bootlegs. If you've seen my bootleg section, I've showcased those. More bootlegs that we start into the solo. So we got Lennon, McCartney. Um, yep, Lennon, McCartney. Again, these are the headers that we got that Capital gave out in the 70s to record stores. And I believe they have the catalog numbers up to, so this one came out up to Band on the Run. So that's when Capital issued this set. Uh, then McCartney, McCartney, McCartney gets the biggest slab when we get into George Harrison. George Harrison, Ringo gets a little piece of the action. And then I call this the family section, which is Yoko and Linda and Sean Lennon and Julian Lennon. And then we get into Badfinger and the related things. And this is the entire Apple Records catalog from Ravi Shankar to David Peel to Mary Hopkins on and on. You, I did a whole video on that at one point, I believe. And then uh, there's the entire Dark Horse catalog, which was George Harrison's record company. He had with Capital, actually Warner Brothers. And then these are all uh, basically comps, cover records, albums, artists doing cover songs of the Beatles, including an eight track of Percy Faith. And then Beetle Boxes, Mono, Stereo, and that's a long story. French, Japanese, the Beatles and Mono, you've seen those. The Roll Up Box, MFSL Box. I'm one that's not a big fan of the Mobile Fidelity Box. I always steer people away. There's too many other great records. MoFi, during that period, was a little heavy handed with those Beatles records, just my opinion. And then it goes into my Beatles book collection next door here. And um, my Beatles lunch boxes, a little paraphernalia. These are wingdings and I'm waiting. It's like Cinderella, okay? There's the girl out there. Sounds creepy, doesn't it? These are from 1964. There's a girl out there that will fit into these. Anyway, I'll better stop there. <laughs> anyway, Wingdings, Beatles sneakers. Um, whoa, you got to do it right, Mazzy. Okay, Pete Best, drummer of the Beatles, autographed drum. Mad Day Out is a book that I helped edit from the Mad Day Out, which was 1968, a day where several photographers walked with the Beatles through central London, just taking pictures and doing new PR pictures. And I have behind here and in another room, which I moved, a bunch of the Beatles Genesis books. Genesis is a publisher that does limited edition books. I won't get into those. Maybe at some point I'll do a special video on those. And this is where I recently moved my jazz section to. There were Beatle books here. And I really wanted to get my jazz section up and out from the bottom row on the other side. And so now they've loosened up. There's more room. Again, those headers are from 1970s. Our record store, the record factory. So again, all alpha. A mix of things until we get to the end. And then there's, I had done a, a 70s Verve reissue series that Robert Ludwig mastered most of. And those are there along with Music Matters. And obviously the Tone Poets will go here lately or later eventually when I pull them from upstairs. Uh, my buddy Larry, who I grew up with from the time I was 12, passed away about six years ago, and he left me several things, including this photograph taken by Mike McGear, who is Mike McCartney, Paul's brother. He used the uh, name Mike McGear for his music and comedy troupe and some photography. So uh, this is with Pete Best, 1962, I believe that was taken. And then this is Sir Richard Starkey, otherwise known as Ringo Starr, with yours truly. I met, finally met a Beatle in my life in 2014 when his Genesis book photograph was published. There was a party, an event, 
and PR thing in uh, Las Vegas. So I got to meet a beetle. And this is me in Strawberry Fields in Liverpool when I was working on my book. And here's me and my co-author on the steps of Savile Row. This is uh, the, where the Apple building is in uh, London. And on the rooftop uh, of this building is where the uh, end of Let It Be takes place. And Larry also left me this pic, this autograph he got of John Lennon at K San Radio in 1975. And then across from this is a good portion of my Beatle book collection. I mean, this could go crazy. I want you, I'm going to do a video at some point on my Beatle book collection. They're somewhat organized, not exactly, because there's you know, obviously McCartney section, John Lennon section, auto um, actually biographies, group biographies. George Harrison, Ringo's here somewhere. Danny Leibowitz, great photographer. Well, I have a lot of uh, books by a lot of the photographers. There's Ringo, he's got a few things here. There's a few little tchotchkes too mixed in here. Um, what is that? That's a, oh, Pete Townsend at the Fillmore, 1998. Um, that's Instamatic Karma. John Lennon by May Pang. May Pang was with John Lennon during the uh, Lost Weekend in LA in 75. This is kind of cool. That's a bed sheet from the Hilton Hotel in 1964 in San Francisco. We don't want to do a DNA test to see what's on that sheet, I don't think. Um, but there's a lot of little kind of cool little things to pick up and look at here. Ba, ba, ba. Let's give you a little tour here. This is um, a Beatles fossil watch, and this was signed by Walter Shenson, who's a producer and owned the rights until he died of A Hard Day's Night. He produced A Hard Day's Night back in the day. This is good. Um, these are great. Market Marxist Minstrels, a handbook of communist subversion of music by David Nobel, along with his... Uh, Communism, Hypnotism, and the Beatles. This is where the, um, what today they would call the Christian right was down on rock and roll, the devil's music, and um, you know, the youth of America is getting screwed. Where's he now? I'm sure he's up in heaven. License plate my girlfriend at the time in the 80s gave me for my car. I don't, I no longer have that car. I no longer have that girlfriend. <laughs> Beat fan, California. Um, I think that's enough of that. You get the idea. The birds, this is the first time out of two times I ever saw the birds. That's after Gene Clark left, but it was Michael Clark, David Crosby, Chris Hillman, and Roger McGuinn. I saw them when I was a kid, went with my friends and his parents to San Jose Civic Auditorium to see the birds, 1967. Great, great time to see the birds. Now we're going into the CD room in the office. Again, everything's organized. Let me turn this down. I got these little kind of cool monitors for my computer. They're audio engines and they, um, Yep. And they really sound really good. I don't have them pointed to me because they just fill the room when I'm doing uh, things for my computer when I'm not playing through my stereo. So this is my office where I work. I actually do have a job, self-employed. I work at home as a photo agent. And if you don't know what that is, I'll have to explain it to you someday. I represent commercial photographers. One of my photographers, Michelle Clement, this, this goes way back to the eight, late 80s. Uh, Dennis Hopper for Movie Line, that's when um, Blue Velvet came out. And she took this picture. This is my son Joseph when he was around 17 or 18. No longer has long hair. That picture was used on a promo thing when we did a 50th anniversary of Summer of Love promo for my photographers. More Beatle books, that's where I moved the Beatle books. I 
had this built on the foundation here because it's kind of a wasted space and it fits all my CDs. Although, I have this. These were designed by a guy named Piers Matson, and they used to be advertised a lot in the 80s, 70s and 80s in uh, Goldmine Magazine and other things. And he designed things for record storage, LP storage, and he did these CD drawers. I didn't buy them from him, but what happened was I knew a guy that had, was moving and he had a house that these didn't fit, so he, he sold to me really cheap because I know they're expensive. But I have all my, um, the top row are my Beatles and Beatles solo and everything and it goes up there. I have my classical and soundtracks in here. And um, this is a Chronos Quartet and some more classical Indian, Ravi Shankar. So international, but kind of cool. But at the bottom couple rows are really empty right now because when I built this, I put all my rock soul, everything here, except again, jazz is segregated. Below my guitars. It's a 93 Strat, an Epiphone Casino and an Epiphone Texan acoustic. These aren't playing right now, but uh, when I play CDs, these are my JBL refurbished 100s. That actually sound really good. Audiophiles don't love these speakers. There's a new version that people love, but I bought a pair of these with orange grills in 1975, and they were $600, and my girlfriend thought I was crazy. Sorry about that. Um, but I bought a refurbished pair I found about four years ago, and they sound great in this room. They sound great on CDs, amplifiers. Now, I was talking about my friend Larry who passed away a few years ago. We met when we were 12. We were both drummers in junior high school, and he passed away six years ago. When we were in junior high school in the in the jazz band and the high school orchestra. We both played drums, but we wanted to start a rock and roll band. So I quit the drums and picked up a guitar and literally a few weeks later, we started our first band. But when I moved to Seattle five and a half years ago, his wife gave me this drum set that was his, this was his uh, small jazz set that he had for about 15 years. So it's very sentimental. I don't play very well. In fact, I hardly play, but if I have drumming drummer friends that come over, I'm a shitty guitar player, but I love playing uh, with a shitty musician. I kid, but um, sometimes I'm too embarrassed to play with anyone who's really good. But um, that's my buddy, Larry. That's when, uh, that was his first marriage out of two, when I was his best man. And um, that picture down there is the, when we were on a cruise thing under the Golden Gate Bridge. That's with my son and what my son Joseph would call him Uncle Larry. So it's kind of a cool thing. These are cameras that were my father's. I used to make Super 8 and, and uh, eight millimeter films when I was in junior high school and high school. And this was his uh, Burst Pressman camera. My dad was in photography a little bit, not professionally. I took a lot of pictures, was into it. I took a lot of pictures at shows at Winterland. Um, in the 70s, but I was never, or wanted to be a professional photographer. But I'm in awe of the photographers I work with. That's a young Mazzy. It's the last time I ever wore shorts in public. That's analog film, probably outdated. And uh, a nice little RCA working turntable. Here I just have a system from, I don't know, the 90s, I guess, a Denon and a Rotel. Nothing special, not cool vintage, sort of that mid-period. But I do have this. Um, I used to love this table. This is a dual CS5000. I bought it new in 1987, thinking it was going to be the last turntable I could ever or would ever get because CDs, the better format, ha ha, ho ho. Uh, would be the future. And I don't use it here for it, it still works. I probably should get a new cart for it, but I just don't play vinyl down here. I like it and I can never part with it. So what would I get? Maybe three, four, five hundred dollars maybe. 
And I, to me, it's not worth it at this point because it's very sentimental. So I should probably get it refurbished if I want to play records, but I just have a great place upstairs here and CDs and um, everything else sounds great here. You've seen in my CD box set videos, all these, so I won't get into those. I did do a video, which you probably saw if not look back, of my Fillmore and Winterland handbills that I just love. I love the artwork in these. And I used to be on the mailing list for the Fillmore West and the Avalon, which was a family dog. And so most of these I got in the mail. I recently, in the last couple of years, put them in plastic, took them out of the, of the um, scrapbooks they were in. So the backs in some cases are a little ripped, but some of them, they're just wonderful. I just love these. I love the artwork, right? Look at this stuff. Anyway, I cherish these quite a bit. I mean, you know, so. And then we get into more box sets, which you've seen. And the fabs again. More Beetle box sets. More box sets, CDs. Great place to work, great place to hang out with friends, comfortable when I'm not playing records. Uh, this is a wonderful fiber-based photograph taken again by Michelle Clement. Uh, this was an image that was used, she took especially for the cover of Tony Williams' Angel Street. Michelle's the one that shot almost all of his album covers for Blue Note when he came back and did his quartet, quintet with Wallace Roney and, um, oh God, I'm blanking out right now. Anyway, uh, when he was more melodic, when Tony was writing, it was his work. It wasn't flashy power drums or fusion. Beautiful, beautiful records. Um, and Michelle took this cover for Angel Street, one of the album covers. You've seen the other ones I've shown. You've seen the one uh, of a Native Heart and there were a whole series of them. I think one of them, Foreign Intrigue, is coming out on, I'm not sure if it's Tone Poet, I think it's a BN80, either end of this year or early next year. So that'll be kind of nice. So that's it, again. Um, Mazzy's tour of Mazzy's music area. Fun stuff, right? Thanks for watching, and I really appreciate um, all the support and... Uh, Mazzy loves you.